Hello and happy World Book Day to everyone at Parkdale Primary School. My name is Zana Freylon and I'm the author of 11 books and I live in Melbourne, Australia. And I'm uh, videoing this for you today from my studio in Melbourne. My writing studio is right up the back of my garden. And as you can see, it's quite small. I can reach out and touch just about every wall without leaving my seat. Um, it actually used to be my kid's cubby before we converted it into a writing space for me. And it can get very hot in summer and very cold in winter, but it is absolutely the perfect space for me to come and create. I have all my favorite creative things here. I have Skeleton Raven, this is Clack, and I have one of my very best friends, the Gargoyle, and I have lots of wonderful sticks that I've found on walks. I have rocks that I've picked up along the way. I have ideas all around me. And as you can see, I've got a whiteboard in the back so I can jot down ideas quickly and kind of make different webs and patterns if I'm trying to work something out. Um, and possibly the best thing about this writing studio is that the walls are made of cork. So I don't know if you can see that here, but I've just, or over here, is that I've just actually pinned my ideas to the cork walls with pins straight on and it's fantastic because it means that whenever I have an idea no matter what I'm doing I write it down on a bit of paper and I pin it to my wall and it's waiting there for me whenever I need it. So I have been sent some questions to answer for you and I will do my very best to answer them. So the first question is from Isla in year two and Isla asks how long does it take from writing your book for it to be printed and ready to sell in the shops? Well, that really depends on the book. So for example, the last book I wrote was a novel, this one here, The Lost Soul Atlas, and you can see it's quite thick. It's over 300 pages, about 350 pages. And so that took me um, about two and a half years to write from getting the idea, sending it off to my agent, sending it off to my editor, um, doing lots and lots of edits and lots of lots of drafts and rewriting it lots and lots of times until finally getting it published and into the shops. But for example, Wisp, which I know that you're all studying, and that took me about a week to write and then another month or so of editing, which is very unusual because normally books take a lot longer than that. But Wisp came to me very, very quickly. Um, and after I'd written it and edited it, then the wonderful Graham Baker Smith, the illustrator, came on board and he took maybe a year, maybe a little bit longer to illustrate um, my words and, uh, and, then it was, and then it was published. But I have another picture book which I wrote about six years ago and that will not be in the shops until the end of this year. So sometimes I just have to sit and be patient and wait. All right, the next question is from Lola in year four and Lola asks, do you have any suggestions to help me become a better writer? Yes, I do. Well, the best way to become a better writer, I think, is to read lots and lots of books. The more books you read, the more ideas you'll get, the better your writing will become. You will see different ways of writing. You'll notice different language that authors use. You can explore and experiment with those ideas and those writing uh, in your own writing and that, that kind of use of language. You can, you can use that and explore how that would feel to use that. Um, so reading is, is one of the best ways of learning to write. Uh, my other recommendation is to practice writing a lot without letting anyone else read what it is that you've written. And you might decide to it sometime later down the track, but if you start out writing something and you know that um, your brother or your sister or your parent or a teacher or a friend is going to read it, then sometimes that can stop the story becoming what it really wants to become. So what I do when I'm writing is I pretend that no one is ever going to read the story that I'm writing. And then I find that's where my best writing takes place. And another recommendation I have is to keep a notebook. I keep a notebook, this is my notebook here. I've actually got a few different notebooks at the moment, but as you can see, my notebook is very messy. It's certainly not neat. It's got ideas and drawings and doodles going everywhere. Um, and it's just full of everything. As soon as I get an idea or a thought, I put it down in my notebook. 
And the wonderful thing is that it doesn't matter if you can't read your own handwriting later on or if you can't draw and you just doodle something instead. If the more, the more you pay attention to the ideas that come, the more ideas will come to you. And it's so handy and so useful to have a stack of your ideas waiting for you when you need them. All right, so the next question I have is uh, from Lavelle in year five. And Lavelle asks, what inspired you to become an author? Well, there are lots and lots of reasons for that. One of them is that I had an idea for a story that I thought my kids would like to read. And so I sat down with, it, with them one day to write this story and that became the first book that ever got published. Um, but really, I decided to become an author because I always love writing. And when I write, it's like I'm living inside the story, just like when you read a book. And so when I discovered characters or thought of characters or dreamed of characters that I wanted to spend time with, the best way I could do that was through writing their stories. Because when I write, I can go anywhere and do anything through my characters. I can explore different ways of being and thinking about the world, and I can try to work out how to solve problems. You might think that I know what's gonna to happen to my characters when I write, but I don't and my characters surprise me all the time. And when a character surprises you and does something which you didn't expect them to do, that is the most fun of all. Um, okay, the next question is Adele from Year 5. And Adele asks, how I think of ideas for my books? And I think I've kind of answered that a little bit, but um, when Whenever I have an idea, I write it down, either in my notebook or I stick it to my wall, or sometimes I write it on my hand if I don't have a spare bit of paper on me. And as soon as I get just that inkling of an idea, that little twinge of, ah, oh, that could be interesting, I write it down and then I've got it. And then I've got it there to explore and think about more when I have more time to think of it. And so when it comes time to write a new story, I go to my notebook or I come into my studio and look around the walls and then I just choose the idea that comes to me at that time and which is most exciting to me. And I think I can safely say that I've never ever been stuck for an idea before. And the next question, which is the last question, is from Matthew in year four. And Matthew asks, what does it take to become a successful author? This is a really difficult question to answer because I guess it depends on what you think success is. So is success selling lots of books and making lots of money? And if so, then I don't know the answer to that because that hasn't happened to me yet. And now I don't know the figures in the UK where you are, but in Australia, the average amount of money that an author makes every year is $12,000, which is about six and a half thousand pounds which really isn't very much to try and live on. So is success winning awards and having lots of fans, or is it writing a book that just finds a few readers, but that those few readers really love and it makes all the difference to them? Is success writing a book and having it published? Is it just writing a story? Is success just doing what you love? So for me, um, I don't, I'm not sure I can really answer that question, Matthew, but I can only write the story that I know how best to write and I can only do it the way that feels right to me. And if I do that, and if I'm true to the story and true to myself, then that's the best story that I'm gonna be able to write. And once I've done that, then the rest is out of my hands. So I hear that for World Book Day, everyone at Parkdale Primary School is doing a project on WISP. And that makes me so happy to hear because I love WISP. It's, I, it was such a joy to write and collaborate on a story and Graham and I are very good friends even though we've never actually met we talk to each other a lot and we email and seeing Graham bring my words to life through his illustrations is one of the most wonderful experiences I've ever had when you work together on something like that with someone it makes it so much more than I could ever have made it on my own and Wisp feels a little bit magical for me too because um, I didn't have the idea initially to write Wisp. So my publishers actually came to me uh, because I'd written a novel about a kid growing up inside an immigration detention centre. And they asked if I would be able to write a picture book that was about a kid in a refugee um, centre or an immigration detention centre. And so I said, yes, of course. But then I thought about it and I couldn't work out how I could tell this story in a picture book. 
and I was sitting out on my front deck and I was thinking and thinking and over my front fence there drifted just a tiny little piece of dust that caught in the sun and shone really brightly. You know how dust sometimes does that? And as soon as I saw that piece of dust in that instant the idea for Wisp came to me and that's how it was born. So here is your challenge. In Wisp, Idris has spent his whole life in a refugee camp and then one day he catches a wisp and that with that wisp in his hands he imagines what his life might someday be like. The wisp brings him the promise of a dream. So for this challenge I want you to hold out your hands and imagine a wisp floating down from far far away and coming to land in your hands. And I want you to hold that wisp to your chest and I want you to hold it carefully to your ear and I want you to listen for what promises of dreams that wisp is whispering to you. What might you hope for? What might you dream for? It might be a small personal dream or a great big world changing one. And whatever you hope and whatever you dream is perfect. Now, if you can't think of what to write at first, then here's a way of getting started. And this is a way that often I get started when I kind of know what I want to start writing, but I'm not quite sure how I'm going to go about doing it. So what I want you to do is set a timer for 30 seconds. It's only 30 seconds. And when that 30 seconds starts, I want you to start writing a list of all the words that the wisp pops into your head, no matter how silly they seem. Don't stop writing, not even for a moment. It's really important that you keep writing down every word that comes to you, every little tiny thing, until that 30 seconds is up and then you can stop. But there's something about keeping writing and keeping your pen moving that seems to spark more and more ideas in your brain. And that's a really useful thing to do if ever you are stuck for writing ideas. Another thing which I do sometimes if I can't think exactly what I want to write or I'm stuck with a problem, I know that a, a character has to do something but I can't work out how to make that character do it or how to solve that problem, then what I would do is I take a bit of paper and I very slowly draw a spiral on the paper. I'll show you in my notebook. So I started off drawing this spiral here. And by the time I just did it very, very slowly as I thought through all the ideas and was trying to work out what it was, how to solve this problem I had. And by the time I got to about here, the ideas started coming. And so I started writing them down as quickly as I could. And then when I got stuck again, I just kept the spiral going. You can see it even goes through the words. And by the time I got down to the bottom, I knew exactly what I wanted to say. And then I could start off and I went away and started writing my story. Um, and in fact, that was the working out for a story which... Um, I wrote last year and uh, is now sitting on the publisher's desk waiting to see if it will get published. So I don't know why it works, but drawing a spiral gives me ideas and solves problems every time. Well, that's it from me. Have a wonderful, wonderful World Book Day. Enjoy listening to your wisps. Enjoy imagining all the dreams and futures and some days that you might magic into being. And I hope one day I can see them too. Have a wonderful World Book Day and I will speak to you later. Bye.